What's going on, everybody? What? Welcome back to the 10 7 show. Tara and Goose are already they are in cracking meet show up. form, cracking up over there. So what we got to catch up. What's going on here? Well, welcome back. It's been a while. I think I think our last show was was our last show Three Father's weeks? Day. What? <laughs> I don't even know. But, Y'all uh, are having a good time. I want to know. Some, what it was sometime in June, Justin. Yeah, it was. Yeah, there's probably Father's Day, but Father's Day. Uh, right. we, we, yeah, damn sure was sometime in June because uh, we've been celebrating Tara's birthday ever since. Yes, we. Happy have. belated birthday, Tara! Thank yes. you. I don't know Thank if you want everybody you. know, but I just put it out there anyway. <laughs> Thank you much. Um, but welcome back. How y'all been? We have been great. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, see, y'all, great. man. Y'all been real good. You about to start the show? Y'all cracking up. I Goose know. wiping tears out of his eyes, Tara Ooh. wiping tears out of her eyes. That was a good Yo, man. He needs to take this show on the road. I'm telling you, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. He definitely needs his own uh reality show. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's, make that happen too. let's make that happen too for sure. Um, but how you been? I've been okay, can't okay. complain. Right. Like Sandy Lyle. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what did you say? I don't know what he said. I didn't catch it. I don't know what he said. What you say? Uh, we need to be separated. He needs to go in the corner. <laughs> What's up, Sheena? Hey, Sheena. No, I said I need my own show. I said like Sandy Lyle. Oh, hey, but you would only up? know that if you saw the movie. Like, yeah. I know. Uh, who was the movie? Along came, along came Polly. Along came Polly. Yeah. I saw that movie, but I can't remember. It's been a long time. Along came Polly. Uh, anyway, I'm just trying. I'm stalling while I'm trying to find all our all our stuff here, but um. So yeah, it's been it's, it's been quite the summer, y'all. It's uh, a lot of things going on. So you know, we've took took a few weeks off here and there just to you know enjoy ourselves. But here we are for yet another Sunday here at the Ten Seven Show with well, Tara Thomas. Self, welcome back, family. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us. And uh, right now, we're going to get to everybody's favorite part of the show, and y'all know what part of the show that is. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing in here right. My soon, favorite soon part. Find, here you go. Yes, it is the Would You Rather portion of the show, brought to you by Therapeutic Billing. Tara, tell us a little bit about Therapeutic Billing, please. Um, Sure. So uh, Therapeutic Billing is a um, medical billing and credentialing firm. Um, We are uh, women-led, minority-owned. We also offer virtual assistance services and bookkeeping services. The telephone number for therapeutic billing, if you are a provider and need to be credentialed, recredentialed, or have someone do your billing, is 610-228-2029. And our website address is therapeuticbilling.com. There you go. So, for the Would You Rathers, I think Tyra has those for yeah, us I have today. Yeah, I have a few of them today, so we'll see where, where they lead. A couple of them are really silly. You know, I'm in a funny mode now. Yep. So, here we go. I thought this one was kind of funny. Would you rather have four arms or four legs? Arms. Arms. Legs. I feel like you do a lot of tripping if you, I mean, I trip over. If I I grew up with four legs, then I wouldn't trip. I'd rather have four arms. I'd be so fast. I'd be be in the world championships right now. Four legs? Yeah, four (laughs) arms. Be like a well, weirdo. If you're on the world championship, you got to put shoes on all four of them joints. <laughs> <laughs> I get the cheap right. joints, but I'm, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get sponsored because I'm be so fast. Nike gonna be like, here, you can have these joints. Well, Just yeah, sure. all four and of them. Is every and is every foot gonna be a different size? Ew, that just got creepy. Different sizes, oh. like not I really. would hope not. Okay. Well, yeah, a lot of people like my left foot is slightly bigger than my right foot. I just found out, and I don't know if it's true. I think I'm going to have to get it redone. My left foot is a half size smaller than my right foot. See? So there you go. But I think I'm about to get it redone because I curl my toes a lot. Mm-hmm. And I might have my toes curled when I did it. Why did you have oh, toes? I don't do it. I do it. <laughs> you say you do it just out of habit. Yeah, it's yes, a habit. Yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Would you rather only be able to get around by bouncing like a kangaroo or leaping like a ballerina. Oh, I'd leap like a ballerina. <laughs> kangaroo. I'm going to oh, take the kangaroo. So you'd hop like a kangaroo. Yeah. 
I'm gonna take. I put on a really me. tight bra. And that's because you know, like ballerinas are supposed to be graceful, and I'm anything but. So if I have an option, I'm going with ballerina. Yeah, my yeah, initial thought was to go ballerina, only yeah. for the you know less likelihood to fall aspect. Okay. But, um, I don't want to do the ballerina thing because I don't want nobody looking at me like, yo, why is this dude? I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't care. Do Terry jumping all over the dog. <laughs> <laughs> like he got a tutu on. <laughs> Hopefully we ain't got to be on the okay, going ballerina. And I think if you're going to if you're gonna leap like a ballerina, that should be the required uniform. <laughs> oh, my God. Now, that wasn't in the question. It was not in the it question. It was a caveat. I added it at the end. <laughs> Okay. Me the kangaroo house. Tina's going with kangaroo. Yeah, I'm going with kangaroo. All right, so here we go. Last one. Would you rather go on a silent, non-speaking retreat for a week or Please. go on a long weekend vacation with someone who never shuts up? That would be me. I'd be the someone who B. never shuts up. B. B. So you want to go on the vacation with somebody who never shuts up? Yeah, because I wouldn't be able to stop yeah. talking. So I can't go to one. They throw me out. Yeah, because as soon as I start drinking a little bit, bray. Just a little <laughs> bit with this one, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we just watched the episode of My Wife and Kids where oh, they yeah. went to a joint and they weren't supposed to talk. And there's no way I would have been able to do that. You don't just, think yeah. so? I don't no think we way. could do it, man. I mean, I can, I'm a quiet person. But when I want to say something, I'm going to say it. Yeah, until I'm involved. What's that mean? You're not quiet with me. <laughs> well. Oh, whatever. <laughs> the and, then, that. and then if we went together, there would there would be oh, no, we could not all go on exactly. exactly. There's exactly. no way I could be quiet for no way I could be silent. I can't, and, and, I can't and be you know quiet what? for an hour. Me even going <laughs> Look at it, 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 to cuss them people out. Because I, I know I'm going to talk, and they go like, and I'm going. To... We can. Get... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Michael. <laughs> so I'm not even going to do it. Nope, don't set yourself up for failure. That's no good. Okay, all right. So we are going on a long weekend vacation with someone who never shuts up. Yep. That'll be me and Tara. Yeah. And then <laughs> you and, and Mr. Will have a quiet time, and then come yep. back. And we'll talk your ear off. Mm -hmm. I feel like everybody has been on a vacation like that before, or like has been somewhere like that where somebody just, just doesn't won't shut the hell up. Just yeah. won't shut up. I, Absolutely. You know where I find that happens a lot? The barbershop in, in beauty salon. But well, that's not a vacation. I almost yeah, dropped the N-word. Vacation, but it, it happens there a lot. <laughs> like I almost dropped the N-word when you really? said that. Well, there, <laughs> is, there is always somebody at the barbershop that won't shut up. There is always somebody, and uh, beauty salon probably the same thing. Probably, oh, y'all ever seen that video of the boy in the in, in the in the chair? And you the like, cut my hair! Like, cut my hair! Shut up! Cut my hair! <laughs> <laughs> cut my hair! No, I I don't I know never saw that one. You gotta Just look cut it up. My hair, there. man. All right, if I find it, Tara, I'll send it to you. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Very good. That was the last one. Yeah. That was it. I got. I can go on. I All have right. more. Right, give us one All more. right, you want one more? Okay, this one. one is wild. Why are you gonna hold back on the wild? One? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here we go. Listen closely. Okay. Would you rather be the only person who speaks out of their butt, or yes. be the only person <laughs> who doesn't speak out of their butt? Yo. I <laughs> I'll be on my Ace Fan tour. What you saying? Uh, that's my scripty. I mean, it's just like, excuse me. Uh, Can you please pass the gray poupon? Are you saying? Please. Oh my God. See? Well, I would rather be the only I'm person quiet. that don't speak out of their butt. So we communicate through butts now? Is that is that the future? Like, in in, Ty, like in Tyra's situation, in Tyra's scenario, that's what we are doing now. Wow. That's okay. my scripty. This one, I told you this was a wild one. <laughs> So if you're the only person who does it, everybody else is speaking to you with their through butt. Their butt. <laughs> through their butt. Oh, so like, can you imagine Thanksgiving? No. Everybody talking to their butt? 
Yo, and that's no. all I'm gonna sing. If I'm no. talking about but the only song I'm singing is Us Hold a Meal. That is a new definition me. to your breath stink. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> breath is stink. Like, hey, your breath smell like <laughs> well, I mean, exactly. <laughs> kid, I, like, I couldn't imagine being the only person that everybody else is speaking to their butt. Your breath smell like fuck. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be on the oh. y'all. Y'all yeah, 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 I'm gonna talk to nobody. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna be alone. I'm gonna be the only one that don't speak you out there talking to me from across yeah. the room. Yeah, I don't. Don't yeah. whisper it to me. I don't need you to whisper it to me. I'm good with that. I don't want to talk out my butt. I don't want. I don't want any secrets. <laughs> only. So we all agree to be the only person who doesn't talk out of our butts. I guess that means we just have to talk to each other. Yep, we would have to eat eat with each other because I'm like I'm definitely not going to be at a dinner table and everybody's talking from their butts. <laughs> adult communication will be a category on Jeopardy. <laughs> Absolutely, I love it. Mm -mm -mm. Absolutely. All right. So but, there we go. But when, when people talk out of their butts, the question is, would it be called clapping? Oh my god. <laughs> I can't. Who or would it? it be called shit talking? Hey, <laughs> Muted butt. <laughs> Muted butt. <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> oh god. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh. Oh. All right. Well, that was the uh, Would You Rather portion of the show brought to you by Therapeutic Billing. Yes. And now it's time to go to another portion of the show. And y'all probably know what part it is because y'all enjoy this one, too. And uh, it, dog, go on, where is the dog right. thing? That's for sure. Well, here we go. Here it is. Sorry. <laughs> it is the tense, dear 10-7 person of the show where we get your letters, your text messages, your emails, and, and all that stuff, and y'all send it to us, and we give y'all our advice, our our unprofessional opinions. And, um, yes, you know, sometimes the advice is good, sometimes it's not, but it always comes from the heart. So, <laughs> Google, and, right? and that's it's all the they count. Letter. You said, where right. Take the first one. All right. Uh, dear 107, <clears throat> I have been in a relationship for three years with my guy, and so far I've yet to meet his family. Mm. I can't go inside his house, and we've only been intimate a few times. Our <laughs> relationship, in quotes, consists of phone calls and text messages. I've invited him and the kids to holiday and birthday events with my family, but he always has other plans. I'm never invited to any of his family gatherings. He says he cares for me very much as I do him, but this isn't working for me. What do I, what do you think? You're a side John. You the side piece. Why do we yeah. have to keep having this I conversation? I think it's unanimous. Why do we, get, why do we <laughs> have to keep having this conversation with you? Mm -hmm. I, I don't understand it. You've never been in the man's house. Come on, come on. Three years. Not but three months, but three years. Three years. And three years. then she said, our relationship consists of phone calls and texts for three years. But he can come get that booty though. Uh -huh. yeah. But she That's said they only had sex a few times. That's well, he's married. married. Exactly. He's he's, well, yeah, I would he's think a whole family. That would be a reason for him to have one more sex with the side job. But he's married. He's probably you actually. Did, he may, is he married? Did it say he's married in here? No. No. So We're I'm, gonna, I'm not going to assume he's married because I did assume that, but let's not assume he's married. I'm okay. telling her right now, you are the last one on the bench. True. You are the if last. He's not married, if he's yeah. not married, you're the last one on the bench. You are the one he calls when everybody else doesn't answer the phone. Oh, wow. That's so sad. Stop mm. it. Yeah, yeah. Damn, yeah. You like that's that's such a, a waste of three years. I hope she's yeah, I'm surprised like, you haven't you didn't ask. Like, what's the deal? Maybe she did. She I hope you were girl. dating other men. Like, I hope you were dating. Oh, absolutely. No, she said my guy. She definitely said he ain't your guy. He he's your, not he's, guy. he's not. Listen. He yeah, may he be her. Guy. You're the one that comes in the game during garbage time. Garbage. What'd you say, Justin? She's the one that comes in the game during garbage time. Oh really? Is that how that works? Yeah, garbage well, time. You, you had no chance to have been decided, and you put people out there so your good players don't get hurt. <sighs> oh, that's so. Is that a real, that's like a thing. Well, you know, like if you watch a Sixers game and it's the end of the game and it's like a blowout, you don't see Embiid out there, right? 
But why would you? You call see them people garbage? out there that you don't really see. I know, but garbage? it's called garbage time because people really? get that's the real. That's the actual time. term for it. Or is he serious? That's what people call it. I mean, it's like uh -oh. you're getting your stats up, but you're not really getting your stats up in the time where it's like you're really into the game. You're oh. getting it up when all the bums are playing. Oh my gosh, that's the garbage horrible. time. Shit. Everybody else, everybody else was like didn't answer the phone or was busy. Let me call this one. Yeah, and you know what? That makes perfect sense because if they've only been intimate a couple times, yep, unless he years. has like erectile dysfunction, um, he's he getting it from somebody. Yeah, he's he getting somebody it from somebody else. else. Yeah. Else. All right, let's move on. So that means that she's not even, she's not having her needs met either. Yeah, and we don't yeah. have to say this too many times, y'all. Yeah, on, come on, people, focus, focus. All right, you ready for the next one? We got, we got comments. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh my bad. Um. Here we go. She just said this is not a relationship. She's getting going in today. Yes. Uh, <laughs> she just said the last one picked for kickball. Yep. You, you oh, know. in the dodgeball game. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. she was not. She was not dating anyone else. Oh no. Well, then you look. You missed out. You should have been dating. You're being faithful to somebody who's not being faithful. Yes. Absolutely. You're being yep. faithful to someone who's not being faithful to someone else. Yes. Yeah. That's a shame. All right, I'm uh, going to do the next one. Okay. okay. All right, Justin? Okay. Yep. Ready? Okay. Dear 10-7, I started seeing Jay, and it's in quotes, so I'm assuming this is a not his real name, mm -mm. a few months ago. I'm 45. He is 39. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have a great connection that has made for an amazing start, but I struggle with some baggage. Jay co-parents his four-year-old daughter, whom I adore with his ex-partner. They were together for six years, but never married. She's always been a stay-at-home mom, raising three older children that Jay considers his kids, but biologically are not. The ex left Jay, a move he didn't see coming. He confided in me that she must have been miserable to leave the financial security he provided. And that is my issue. She still has it. For the past year, the ex and the daughter reside in the house he bought for the family, no strings or rent attached. Their agreement is that she may stay indefinitely. If he decides to move, or I'm sorry, if she decides to move, he will sell the house and she would get half. He also pays her monthly child support, which is $500 more than is legally required. When I expressed how overly generous he was being, Jay elaborated that he wants his daughter to live comfortably and the ex takes good care of the property. While I admire his heart and support, I can't help but think that he's doing way too much. He and the ex are not on speaking terms, and she has she has been cutting ties between him and her older other children. Mm. Even her oldest daughter has called her a gold digger. Am I wrong in agreeing that she's abusing Jay's generosity? I hope I do not come across as a jealous woman because I recognize his responsibility <laughs> with his daughter but I fear he is being manipulated into financially supporting the mom long-term. She's always lived off of child support. It makes me nervous for a potential future together. Should I speak up or stay out of it? Well, it sounds like you already spoke up. Sounds, right. Because you said, you told him like- He got to realize he's definitely he's being overly generous. Like, is, she, is she asking for this or is he just like straight up like, I'm going to do this for her? It seems like he's just doing it yeah, for her. And, 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 and it seems like it's been the agreement since before this. If he's doing, at least he's thing. going ahead and doing all that for her. Yeah. Then it's a whole, I think it's a whole different issue than being taken right, advantage of. Because they were of. never married. Right. So he, he really not. He's going the extra mile. Like anything. he's giving, he's paying $500 extra. over the, yeah. the, the league, the, the decided child support amount. And maintaining the household. Paying the, the house, the mortgage, all the bills. How you paying if everything? You, if he's deciding to do that. There's nothing you can say. There's nothing you can say. And and yeah. it, I think it's, if he's deciding to do that on his own, I think it's a whole lot deeper than what she thinks. Yeah. Because... It has he, to be she good. doesn't say that she asked for it, and she doesn't say that he just volunteered to do it. But if he's just volunteering to do it, it's deeper than being taken advantage of. Yeah, it, it has to be because they don't even talk. Right. 
I'll be damned. Right. If I'm going to do all of this with somebody I can't even talk to. Right. Oh, we got a comment from Jay Hussein. What's and, up, Jay Hussein? And what up, Jay Hussein? About to pop your comment up in just a second. And what is making me think it's a little deeper. She left him and he didn't see it coming. And he was blindsided, right? He didn't see it coming. It wasn't right. like they had a falling yeah, out. Of that. Yeah, yeah. Because she's been playing him for a fool from the rip crowd. A whole a long time. Well, and the thing about had, it is he had he, insurance. If he is so, comfortably living Coplins. his life and taking care of her. Mm -hmm. Then the girlfriend, she's the girlfriend. I don't know if she's going to be the wife, but she can't really say anything. He's not complaining about money. Right. He's certainly not asking you for money, and he's maintaining right. two households. So you kind of got to mind yeah. your business. I, I, that's what yeah. I would say. Mind your business unless and until he proposes. Then going into marriage, even, I would say even, I, I, get, I get that. Right. But you know, you know that if they say the two become one, then listen. You got to put your piece out there, and you and you should be able to. They should be able to work something out so that everybody is comfortable, right? Even though the baby mom, ex wife, not gonna like it. Well, she's not even ex wife. Uh, she's not even an ex wife. Oh yeah, so she's the baby, baby mom. mom. That's yeah. it, baby mom. So Jay Hussein says maybe he got it like that. Some people are overly generous, the same way, uh, the same way some people are the opposite. And he goes absolutely. on to say she wouldn't complain if he was giving her extra money. Oh, absolutely. And maybe that was the other thing I was thinking. Maybe she feels like I would slighted. be getting. Yeah, she's being slighted. Like, oh, maybe we could do more. Or I could get that, more. I think that falls into what Goose Goose just said. Yeah. Once you, when, uh, she probably does feel that way. But once you once he you know proposes or whatever when they yeah. get married, two become one. You put then the kibosh on that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe you do have well, it like. She that. Pay, but she yeah. got to pay rent, and you only gonna pay what the judge say. But well, she can say the five hundred. <laughs> That's no, I say you're gonna pay for the judge say with that extra five hundred, you put in the trust. Oh yeah, now see that's a good idea. That's a yeah, way to go. That's put it idea. like towards whether she wants to go to college yep. or whatever she wants to do yep. when she's yep. grown. Put that extra yep. money towards that, but still pay child support so her expenses, right. oh, yeah. her monthly expenses right. are covered. That's a good idea. You should be a judge. Yeah. Judge Goose. <laughs> Tune in. Uh -huh. All right, is my turn. We're going to me now. Yes, please. All right. It's my turn to read somebody's crazy situation. Here we go. Dear Tennis, <laughs> my boyfriend and I have been together for about six months, and he's great, loving, generous, fun, and caring guy. But he's so paranoid that I'll get pregnant that it makes me crazy. He's a condom. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. When we got together, he told me that he's not sure about kids and definitely isn't ready now. That's fine by me. I'm 24 I'm 24, six years younger than he is, just starting my career, and I'm not even totally, I'm not totally sure about kids myself yet either. I, I just made that whole sentence my own. <laughs> Keep going. Yo, listen, I didn't I didn't know. <laughs> my own I'm on I'm on reliable birth control and have been since I was 18 with no problems. He also wears condoms. That's what I said, right? Okay. okay, I hope this letter gets better because uh, <laughs> to figure it out, but okay. Exactly. Um, on top of that, he tracks my periods. Weird. That's weird. Okay, he's a serial killer. Um, and, <laughs> and on the day I expected to get it, he'll text me until I assure him that I got it. It makes me feel as if he doesn't okay. trust me or have my back. So I finally talked to him, and he said he went through a pregnancy with a girlfriend when he was younger. And although the woman terminated in the end, it was a bad situation. I'm finishing a big project at work that will advance my next step in my career. And as always, when I'm super stressed, my period was late last month. I explained this to him, but he still insisted I take a pregnancy te test, which oh, I did. That's got to be annoying. Of course, it was negative. He still didn't relax until I got my period. <laughs> he asked, sorry. He asked whether the same thing could happen oh, yeah. this month, and I said probably, or that I might not even get it, and he's completely freaked out, but also asking me to be patient and not break up with him. He's I think I might love this guy, no, but yeah. I'm also wondering he's whether dope. it's worth the stress. No, he's not. What does 10-7 think? He's not worth He's stress. insane. That's what I think. I thought, I thought a few things going into this. About well, this. please. Please share them with her. Okay. Yes. 
I mean, hell, he might also have somebody too. He might somebody else too. Maybe he got somebody that's already pregnant. Have and that. that's why he, he tripping. Like, what? You why, why are you tracking you, my you Why are you tracking somebody else? What, what the? What? Who this, got time for that? Wait a minute. She says she's yeah, twenty four. He's six years older than her, so he's thirty. 30. A grown man still doesn't understand how biology works. Right. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. Oh. You sound like you got your head on your shoulders. You have a good job. You're, you're advancing your career. Leave him alone. Not he's a trainer. Right. She said she's on birth control, and they use condoms. And they use condoms. There's something I wrong. Every, not everything is 100. percent We know, yeah. We know the whole story about the Virgin Mary. But I mean, y'all you know. like, look, y'all like 99.9999. Like, come on, y'all. I, y'all yeah, might I be good. He might have somebody else currently pregnant. I or think she should pain. just leave him alone. But see, I think so too. <laughs> she just said he's a nuisance running the other direction. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, he's got look, someone else from the trauma that he experienced in previous relationship. So he probably really needs some help. He he scored. It was that traumatic. He yeah. said when he was a, when he was young, like it was a young girl. He's he like thirty now. Like what <laughs> happened? Like did he not want the baby, and then she kept it behind his back. I mean, like what the hell? She, she got it terminated. Oh, for the letter, she got it. She got it terminated. Uh, Ryan said he's a smart man. Roe Roe v. Wade is overturned. Better safe. Oh my sorry. god. <laughs> Leave it up to Ryan. Was, here he comes. We with received his, it before that was over time. Yeah, we this has been in we haven't been on the air in like yeah, six weeks. Yeah, so yeah, that yeah. Roe Ro v. Wade wasn't overturned yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. It so last year. So he maybe is he is a weirdo. He and is like, no. he needs to learn to, he to, learn to well, do with his If you're that scared of her getting pregnant, honey, use you your you hand and have a good time. And don't don't do it. Yeah, That's there's the other thing. ways you can get your get off. Like, don't. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could always go with the big A. Mm -hmm. Right. Or Hannah and her four sisters. Yep. <laughs> Hannah and her four sisters. <laughs> there are alternatives to this. He, he is a, he's a nuisance. I'm not, you're not going to call me every five minutes like, did you get it yet? <laughs> I would lie to him every month. No. Every month. Yep. Yeah. Nope, uh, sorry. Still yo, it. like when you uh, that can be like the best and worst news you get as a guy sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, like if you're not wanting to like, get, yeah, like, if you're not wanting to get pregnant, like all right, cool. But then the other side too is like, all right, I gotta wait a week now. Oh my god, are you serious? <laughs> well, I mean, unless you run a red light, some people run red lights, so it is what some it is. But I'm just saying some people do I'm run just red saying. Light. Like, you get that news, you're like, all right, all right well, I got to chill out for a week or however long. <laughs> so however long. Oh my God. Here you go. How old are you, Justin? Your biology works. <laughs> well, I mean, some people are different. That's why. Some people are different. You're right. Yeah. People that, like, that was, that was Actually, you know, this is not a biology. You know, uh, a lot of female athletes don't have regular ones at all. Oh, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, I do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very, it, it varies for for different people, but yeah. that's that's my um. I'm about to start going to the gym the every day. day. <laughs> <laughs> you want to start playing basketball, <laughs> tennis, swimming? What, what I got to uh -huh. do? Yeah. Uh -uh. Okay. So let's go right. to that studio. <laughs> you don't want to be a baby daddy. Yes. So that's leading into our topic. Yeah. Wait, wait, you? I'm a baby daddy. You are a bit. You are my baby daddy. <laughs> uh, said too late. I'm a baby daddy. I have a baby, and you are his daddy. All right. So how to I'm navigate baby, daddy, baby mama, baby daddy drama? <laughs> All right. All right. Let's out of baby. Oh my god. His goose is <laughs> his goose. Is it is. <laughs> he always starts it. He always. It's him. It's him. He always starts it. Okay. So let's be clear. Blended families are not a new phenomenon. We see it talked about online and we have this belief that elders didn't have entire families or children that we didn't know about until we hit adulthood. Like legitimately, how many of us have like, like learned that like your uncles and your grandfather had a whole outside family? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But your grandmother ain't say nothing because she was saved. Okay. <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so nothing about this is new. I repeat, blended families and co-parenting relationships were not started with the dawn of millennial families. We all right. have friends and family members that have dated someone that's had children outside of their previous or their present relationship. Mm -hmm. Peace and harmony and co-parenting and blended families are not that hard to attain. It's only a problem when there is drama. When the drama is present, that doesn't help make things any easier for all parties involved. The challenge isn't being with someone that has a baby mama or baby daddy. The only challenge is that people don't understand and stick to their role within the co-parenting relationship or blended family, which ends up causing baby mama slash daddy drama. So you are dating someone that has this kind of drama. Let's get into how to navigate baby mama and baby daddy drama so that you understand your role. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. pay close attention. How do you navigate baby mama and baby daddy drama? Never well, become I think, a baby mama or baby daddy. That's the best way. Yes, that's the first way. Avoid well, at all costs. I mean, with someone who's toxic. Let me let me say. But you, I think, don't know that somebody is toxic until you're with them. Something right. The right. Like you know, you put on this facade when you first bad. meet somebody, and you think that there's somebody totally different, and then you get involved with them, and we all know how babies get here, and then it goes left. Mm -hmm. So oh, basically, it's saying that the first thing you want to do is take a step back and find out why is there drama? What is causing the drama? And remove your personal emotions from the equation, okay? Okay. So here are some possible reasons. One of the most common reasons is because she or he is still involved physically with the baby daddy or baby mama. Mm -hmm. And we know that's true. All around yeah. the world, same song. Okay. Um, she or he is doing it for the child. Unfortunately, there are relationships where the compatibility and chemistry were not checked prior to allowing things to get serious. In other cases, there are one all situations that had to turn serious after the confirmation of unborn life. Like I, I have a friend who met a guy at a club, had sex with him, got pregnant that night. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he did not say anything to his parents, to his whole family until she went into labor. He left a note on the coffee table and was like, I'm going to the hospital because so-and-so is having my baby. Hmm. What? It happened. Mm. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> um, she or he feels guilty for what happened in the relationship or how it ended. If the relationship was tumultuous and toxic, then one or both parties may feel that things should have ended differently. Therefore, they both may continue to entertain one another beyond a co-parenting level because of familiarity. Isn't that the same thing as the other one? Like still like kind of sleeping with them because it's yeah. familiar? Mm -hmm. A lot of times that's what it is. Mm -hmm. It's still your pattern. Right. You can't stand the right. person, but it's your pattern. And then the next one is he or she still loves the other. This does not need explanation. Let's be clear. Your partner should have love and respect for their child's parent. However, it should not flow into physical relations that cause your partner to go back and forth between you and their ba baby mom or baby dad. Yep. Um, one question to ask yourself is, is the baby mom or baby dad just jealous and bitter? And we all know jealousy rears its ugly head. Mm -hmm. So... If this is the possible reason that there is drama, then the underlying root of this is that they are jealous of you or the union that you have with your partner, their previous partner. There right. are telltale signs of jealousy and bitterness. Sign number one, they talk negatively about you to others. Instead of telling you how they feel directly, they involve others and attempt to turn them against you. I've never been in this situation, so I can't relate. Um, they create minions to do their dirty work while their hands remain clean. They are always talking about their past relationships. Even if you're attempting to converse with them about an issue you have with them, they may go back to the relationship they had with your partner. They may attempt to make you feel insecure about your relationship by pretending that you that they know more about your partner than you do. Mm. They lack boundaries and respect. If they, if they attempt to create issues with the child for attention, show up unexpectedly, 
call at inappropriate hours for non-emergencies and involve others in the co-parenting affairs, then this is a lack of boundaries. We all know about those boundaries. Mm -hmm. They are very intrusive and want to know about your personal business, whether asking their baby daddy or mama directly or by asking others at no point should the baby mama or daddy know details about your relationship. That is called fuel for the fire. Mm -hmm. If they start to go out of their way to ask your partner or other people within your social circles or past mutual friends about your personal affairs, then this is a sign of overstepping boundaries as well. This is a really long article. <laughs> Any questions so far? There's I, a lot I to unpack. Just, okay. I was just wondering, like, I was curious to know if, like, anybody that's checking this out right now, anybody still with us, if they had any, <clears throat> yeah. me, any kind of baby mama, baby daddy drama that they've dealt with and how they may have dealt with it. Um, you know, if you want to share, you can put it in the comments or you can cut, hit us up. You can call us at 669-275-0323 and, uh, you know, let us know how you dealt with the baby mama, baby daddy drama. You know, um, one thing I can say from my experience is that I think in the beginning, you expect a person to be a certain way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so when those expectations are not fulfilled, you know what I mean? It can cause that riff and that drama. So what I've learned to just not have any expectations, like you just meet that person, like this no is where they are. Yeah, this is how, this is what they do. And don't expect anything more and anything less. And if things change or they do something a little better, then it's kind of like a bonus. But Tyra, is that from, and in your previous experience, is that from like, you did expect a certain level of whatever, and there was mm -hmm. just like constant letdown, and and so you yep. were just like, what? You know what? Yeah. Okay. So okay. I'm just, this is what it is, and I'm gonna move accordingly. Okay. You no, know? and then so that's that's what helped like me to like not be angry because you have to deal with this person for a long time. So it's, it's like, what can I mean? Do? And even what can I once, do to keep me from being angry is right. to just not expect any more than what you've already given. Right. And then even once, like, I mean, this person's going to be in your life forever, right? You have right. A, you have a child. You're going to have shared life experiences. You're going to have common grandchildren. So it would behoove you. Right. You don't have to take my advice, but it would cordial. behoove you to at least be cordial. Right. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. And that was the goal. I was saying in the beginning it was not cordial. But right. it got there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, but that's how I got there. I'm like, okay, this is what it is. Let me accept it for what it is mm -hmm. and move forward. You know what right. I mean? It's like it, it's like expecting an orange to turn eventually turn into a grapefruit. You know what I mean? Like, let me mm -hmm. just accept that this is an orange. It's not going to taste no different no matter when or how long I leave it on this tree. It's right. an orange. And Justin, can I ask you from your perspective coming in as, as a stepdad, like, did you ever have any interaction with the dad that you felt was like negative or nefarious or it just was like a seamless transition for you? No, I didn't have, I didn't have, I haven't had any negative um, interactions with him ever. Oh. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I, I get, I guess we, I guess, I guess him and I have, we're, I guess we're both kind of quiet. Like, I don't really know him that well to say this, but I'm a little quiet. He's a little quiet. So, you know, he's probably a little quieter than I am. Um, and so, no, there hasn't really been him and I, you know, the interactions haven't been negative. I guess I guess you would say they're positive. I would say they're neutral. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I mean, I, no, there's, there's never, it hasn't really been drama, drama. Right. Like, Stuff you hear on TV, like, oh no. Well, that's good because you know, we all, you know, got a baby mama drama and baby daddy drama adjacent. Oh, totally. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. We, all, <laughs> we all do. And and it yeah. seems like, I, I don't know, I mean, like, I know our generation saw it, right? But then, like, the younger generations, like, younger than us, that's why I think a lot of the violence in the. Right nefarious foolishness comes into play. Like, I mean, it's almost like no, they... I, going no, on no, I, 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 yeah, I, I think actually, it just depends on depends on who it is, really. Who it, it is. depends it on is. who it is. 
It depends How on what is it is. And, and the whole more, like, it's like almost cute. Like, oh, that's my baby daddy. I, n- I never, I never thought that was cute. I never thought it was cute. Yeah. And I, mm-hmm. and no offense to anyone that is listening or watching, but I knew what I did not want, right? I did not want to be mm-hmm. somebody's baby mom. I didn't want baby dad. I didn't want that. Like, I yeah. wanted. I was just saying, because I've seen baby dads and I was, I don't want no parts of that. Right. So I knew. <laughs> I knew I would get married eventually, and I knew that I wanted children. I wanted us to have that shared experience. This is my first time. This is your first time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, we did this together. Like, I didn't want no no foolishness, no extra nothing. Now, we'll see what happens with the next husband. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> see I mean, I wanted that same thing, too, but it didn't work out that way. Right um, and life so takes away right. right. expectations and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, you just right. accept the situation for what it is, and you know, mm-hmm. leave it in God's hands. I was um, one of the dummies that wanted the opposite. What? Like I, you know, how I was about man. I ain't getting married. Oh man. God! It just has a kid with somebody. I don't really need to get married. <laughs> that was me. Like I, those words came Wait, out. So of Justin, my mouth. you, you, you thought about having kids without being married? Absolutely. Yeah, nobody oh. thought he was getting married <laughs> ever. Yeah, oh, wow. I was at the wedding. Like, I think it was my mom, my dad, my best like, friend. All of them was like, we didn't think he was ever getting married. I do not recall the I deal. I don't remember that. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Well, we, well, we I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be bad. We all know that. It oh, doesn't yeah. have to be bad. We know, we know there are success stories where people co-parent all the time and people blend families all the time, and it does not have to be bad. I think it yeah. takes a certain level of maturity. Absolutely. Um, but, well, we got a comment you know, here from Jay Hussein. Jay Hussein said a lot of people don't have any example of good co-parenting. When I was a teenage Parents dad, I period. had no one to look up to. All my friends now tell me I showed them how to be a father. I oh, that's that. awesome, Jay. Hey. Look right there. Yeah, very good. But see, you use common sense, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, a lot of us didn't have a good example of co-parenting or regular parenting, just parenting, right. period, some of us. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, I knew what I didn't want because I knew my, my dad was a dick. And so, like, I saw <laughs> what happened with him and my mom. And so I was like, yeah, no, I'm never going to be in that situation. Because if, if this were to ever happen, would nobody know but God yeah. and the doctor. Cool. Uh, Jay Hussein continues to say, I led with my heart. I did the best job I could, and I was just a kid myself. I turned from a boy to a man overnight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's having kids are doing yeah. to you, shape. Yep. And you step up. They should. Yeah. You stop that. Yeah. They you know should. Because the whole thing is straighten that spine up. <laughs> the, all the right drama, now. all it does is make a difficult situation worse, more difficult. Yeah. You know? So you already don't know where to go, what to do, how you gonna do this, how to do that. Yeah, that's true. All right, so let me let me just wrap this up and then we can move forward. Oh, real quick, one more comment. Um, uh, Jay said, "I was silly, goofy. Next thing I know, I got a crib and I'm baking brownies at 18." Oh, <laughs> good job, Jay. <laughs> good job. Uh, we got a, a Facebook. You just said I co-parent with well with my ex-husband and current husband. On the flip, my husband and his ex-wife, not so much. Um, It is what it is, but you got to be strong on either side of the coin and realize it's about the children exactly, and not about you. you. It is. It is. is. But people, you know, people get in their feelings, right? And jealousy is, isn't that one of the cardinal sins, I think? (laughs) So anyway, all right. In moving forward, now this is removing yourself, right? Allow your okay. partner or spouse to handle their affairs. So if you're not the parent, let them handle it. You cannot get involved because that may be the ammo that baby mom or baby dad is looking for to use against your partner slash spouse. Always remain respectful to the baby mama or baby daddy. Do not You do not want to have anything to regret down the line, right. like a court case. <laughs> or, or your child oh, not, you know what saying? Saying, not respecting you or not being or being exactly. upset with you because of the way you're treating their parent like that's still their parent that's right, right. it's true and it's always going to be so yeah um and you know that going into a relationship with somebody right you right. know so 
it is very normal for you both to experience some form of jealousy. The baby mama slash daddy had a large part of your partner's life at one point, and now you have it today. It is not out of the norm for both of you to feel a way about this fact or feel some way about this fact. Attempt to develop some form of relationship with the baby mama daddy, even if it's just an understanding of res respecting the love you pour into their child. The end. Right. The end. It's really simple. I mean, like I said, I've never been in that situation, but I have a level head. And if I was right. with somebody that had a kid and it wasn't my kid, like, it's a kid. Like, I, we, I had nothing right. against you. I don't even know you, lady. So. <laughs> You just you think about the kid first. That's exactly yeah. right. It's what about with the child. It's not about your your wants and your needs or what you care about. And you are old enough for your wants not to hurt. Absolutely. So, Justin, oh. you have anything you want to add? No, nah, y'all handled it, man. Y'all did y'all did <laughs> y'all thing over there. <laughs> y'all handled business. Y'all took care of it. I, I have that. nothing left to add. That's it. We've been gone for five weeks. <laughs> I know. So do we have our, our um, final twist? And, and if you guys who are watching, if y'all have a final twist, final thought for the day, something you want to get off your mind, something you want to get off your heart, put your uh, final twist in the comments and we will read your final twist as well. As or you we can write us a letter. Ours. Talk about you. <laughs> yeah, we, we, uh, we usually get them from, uh, who we usually get them from? We usually get them from Jay Hussein, Ryan. Sometimes from uh, Tanya. Tina, yep. Tanya. Tina, yeah. yeah. So, I yeah. see Lucky. So, check on her. So, who? All right. So I have mine because I was doing all this parenting research, right? Okay. Parenting parenting. And so as you all know, we only have the one kid who's going to be going to college. Um, <laughs> so my final thought is I never realized how truly sarcastic I was until I had a mini me. Who acts exactly like I do? Yep. Right, Goose. Mm -hmm. He is sick of both of us. Absolutely. <laughs> My dad like, when that goes to college, thing. you go get an apartment. Go with him. <laughs> yep, I can't take. <laughs> You've been here all this time. You only got a little bit more to go. Yeah, and then it's just gonna be me and you. Gray. Oh my God, what are we gonna do? All this great. Yeah, he, he always blames all this on me. Yeah. Nothing to do with age. He just brings his grades on me as well. When I met you, and had no gray until we got married, and he knows. No, I had, I had no. I that, don't do that. Yes, See, you know. Everybody knows I had gray before we got together. But I did, knows, and I got a lot more gray after we got together. And, um, Even because you continue to Aunt age, you keep on living. <laughs> Your mom pointed it out. Aunt Madeline pointed it out too. This really. <laughs> So, since she said it, it's true. Whatever. <laughs> so you better say you gonna pull the auntie card yep. for real. Uh -huh. sure. <laughs> sure. All right. So here's mine. Having a child is like getting a tattoo on your face. You better be committed. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> you ain't never lie. I love it. I love it. I love that. I might get that. I might get that as a tattoo. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got we got There's a, a final twist Jay. from uh, Jay Hussein. He says, uh, "Final twist: This show is necessary as we reach this age. It is important to converse with your peers, and the fact that you guys bring up topics we all go through. I just want to thank you for that. Well, thank you, Jay. Oh, appreciate thank you, Jay. Love you. Love appreciate you. The recognition and we appreciate the love, and uh, we appreciate you hanging out with us every Sunday. Yep, all for right. sure. Is it my turn? Who's there? One of y'all, one of the guys. Okay, I got it. Okay. Light travels faster than sand. This is why some people appear bright until you hear them speak. Oy vey. Yes, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. That ain't deep, Corey. <laughs> it took me a second, but yeah, I got it. <laughs> it's so true. It's 100% true. <laughs> yes. It took oh, me a God. second. Yeah, it, it, it is true. It is true. <laughs> Man, like, dang. <clears throat> All right. All right, um, Justin. My final twist is it's something simple that we all know, but I just want to go ahead and say it. Um, make sure your peoples know that you love them. All right. Um, my family ain't got to tell me ever again that they love me because I already know. 
You know what I'm saying? So I want my family to know that I love them. So make sure your, your loved ones know that you love them. Yes. I love you, Justin and Tyra. Oh, oh we love you. I'm not being a smart ass. I really love you guys a lot. I said that. I'm not being, I'm not being a smart ass. You are my favorite people in the world. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Don't forget y'all. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Send some people over to like our page. Yeah, bring some, like, bring comment, some folks with y'all next time. Bring some folks. Share yeah, the, that group, the group is friends. over a thousand people, man. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. So all 1,000 of y'all go on New Twist Radio and hit that like button. <laughs> go, subscribe. go ahead and subscribe to the, to the, to the channel. Yes. Right, got a few shows. Uh, Check us out Thursday nights at 9. Yes. A little sports talk down there. We're going to add some more. Mm -hmm. oh, and check oh, out Murder and Mayhem. They may have solved the crime of the century. Oh, we did. We totally solved. <laughs> we, I don't know if y'all watched the OG episodes that we've been doing on Murder and Mayhem, but we totally, yeah. so, we totally solved the OJ crime. Who killed the Cole Listen, crime? We solved it. If y'all haven't gone over and checked out the OJ series that that they did on Murder yes. and Mayhem with minute in minutes. Go check it out. Go to the YouTube channel, New Twist Radio YouTube channel. Go check out the series. It says there's like one, two, and three, and then there's final episode, and then there's another episode after the final episode. Yeah, check it out. We got stuff yep. that even the bloggers don't have. <laughs> <laughs> yep, check it. We out. may have oh, solved yeah. the problem. We saw oh, the promise the, uh, century. Put P.O. Bond. He said, uh, yeah, what's up with the... Uh, I was going to say, I'm, I, I wasn't going to say that, but uh, he said he, it'll be in the mail Monday or Tuesday. Okay. okay. Send me a text the other day I meant to tell y'all. Oh, we I, love I, you I too, Sheena. She I said she loves family. What happened? We, we love, love you too, Sheena. Oh, we love Sheena, the teeny tiny pieces. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, with that all being said, we appreciate y'all hanging out with us this week on the 10-7 show. Of course, like, like we always say, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow us on social media and all that good stuff. And uh, we'll talk to y'all next time here on the 10-7 show. And uh, when y'all come back, make sure y'all bring y'all friends. All right. Yes. All right, y'all. Peace. Be safe, y'all.